What's up guys, I'm Andrew Freed. Today I'm gonna to show you the eight concepts of which you can evolve your bass line. As a bass player, in every level that I go over, these are concepts that you should study all the time in your practice. Root association means where is this progression on our instrument? Here's the progression that we're playing and we're gonna find the roots to it in one cluster. This means no shifting. So here's C. E flat, A flat, then F, G. See how I played this higher G and that lower G? Anytime you create a bass line, make sure that you can play it in one area without shifting before you move. Find a different area, and even better, maybe with a different fingering. This way you can absorb the bass line in a different way, therefore giving you a different creative approach to your bass line. In your practice, you need to find where the chord roots are, and then see where you could build them all over your instrument. We're going to add the octave. When we add the octave, we're going to start moving out of these cluster based positions. There's a shape to this octave. If you can remember this shape in a pattern, it's movable. We're lucky we get to play shapes and patterns. Take advantage of them. Learn your octave shape. Be able to do it everywhere on your instrument. So level three is pretty simple. Rhythm and syncopation just means varying up how you play your bass line. Syncopation is when we're playing a lot of notes between our strong beats. With rhythm and syncopation, you don't have to change your note choice in order to be creative. Roots and fifths. This is where a little bit of theory starts to come in. If you know what makes up your chords, you'll know that it consists of a triad or an arpeggio, which would be the root, third, and the fifth. In major chords, and minor chords, the fifth does not change. That's what makes the root to fifth bass pattern the most common go-to in all of bass lines because it doesn't matter if it's a major or minor chord. The fifth stays the same. The fifth has a shape two on our bass. If you remember your octave shape we just talked about, if I drop this fifth, I can play it lower. It doesn't matter if it's above or below. If that's the fifth of the chord, it stays the same. So in this case for C, I have the lower fifth too. Same fret, string below it. And then above. So when I move this around with the progression, You can see how just with the mix and matching of the above fifth and the below fifth, I have creativity beyond the root. That's what we're doing here. We're evolving our baseline. Approach notes deserves a whole video, a whole course on it for itself because we're starting to get into walking baseline concepts and this is where you can really, really take your lines to the next level. But just brushing upon it here, what they are is they're notes that resolve into a new chord or measure. So you're not even thinking, what notes can I play in this chord? You know, the root, the fifth. You're thinking, where am I and where am I going? In this case, I'm playing C minor. <laughs> and my next note is E flat. What notes can I use to get there? Well, there's two notes between it. You 
see it kind of walks into it. It transitions into it. That's what approach notes are. They don't have to be part of the key or the scale or anything that you're using. They just have to have motion to the next chord. So there's a couple ways we could do this. I didn't have to play both notes between. I could just choose one. To A flat. To F. To G. Right now I'm just using chromatic approach notes. That's a really, really cool way to spice up your line, involve a lot of motion, a lot of movement, and most importantly, it's the first stage we've gotten out of playing something that's just a part of the chord. The next level, arpeggios. This is the bread and butter of what basses do. Arpeggios are the notes that make up chords. We as bass players, outline them. You must know all your arpeggios on the bass in multiple ways, on different fingerings, all over everything. Otherwise, you're not going to absorb our fretboard and you're not going to absorb this instrument to its full capacity. In this case, we just have major and minor chords. So we need to know our major and minor arpeggios. A major arpeggio is made up of a root, third, and fifth taken from a major scale. And then the minor arpeggio is a root flat third and fifth, and it's just one note different. That one note difference changes up all the fingerings in every way we approach it. If I build triads with this progression, we'd have C minor, E flat major, A flat major, F minor, G major. So there's so many different ways you could play this. I started certain arpeggios on different fingers. Again, another video, another course. This is just a breakdown of what I'm doing. If you don't know how to play arpeggios on every starting finger, everywhere all over your instrument, then you are not going to be able to create cool bass lines and bass lines that outline the progression. Arpeggios are the most important thing I would vouch for on our instrument out of all these levels. It's time to add some spice, some flavor to our lines. That's where fills come in. Fills is just a space of time that you fill in with any notes of your choosing. Certain scales that I strongly encourage are the pentatonic scale, which is a super easy five note scale that you can play both in major and minor versions. And then the next thing would just to be know the key center of what you're playing. In this case, we're in C minor. So when I play C minor, all those notes of the scale are go-tos for when we want to fill in notes within the line. Getting creative with mix and matching and phrasing of what it's called takes a lot of practice and a lot of attention to really start building your own creative character to when you're going to just randomly do things. Learn other people's music, learn fills and things that pop out to you and apply it into your own playing. <laughs> All right, final level, technique time. We're gonna break this level into the three techniques of which are my favorite to use and which you need to be careful with when applying over a bass line. But if the scenario serves right, let's go for it. Slap bass. Slap bass is obviously one of the most famous bass techniques. Everyone wants to learn how to do it. And the ones that don't like it or don't know how to do it, hate on it. I'm not gonna teach you how to do slap in this video as I'm just breaking it down. But slap is such a cool way to elevate your bass line. Ghost notes is the next part of this technique level. When I say ghost notes, I'm talking finger style ghost notes, which are the act of deadening the string and striking it in a percussive way. I 
I have a course on Ghost Notes that's coming out very soon. I'm so pumped about it. It breaks down every single possible way you could play Ghost Notes. I mean, every way, with your fingers. So keep a lookout for that course. Can't wait to show it to you. All right, last but not least, we're gonna talk about another technique I love, tapping. This is definitely scenario based. If you see in the breakdown when I did it, it was a really cool approach to this progression. When I tap, I mostly use arpeggios. This is an advanced technique that requires extensive arpeggio knowledge in addition to your fretboard knowledge. Just a quick little rundown of what I'm doing is I'm hammering the minor triad with my left hand and then tapping a higher part of this arpeggio and then pulling off in this kind of continuous arpeggiated motion. I like to kind of mess around with notes within the scale with pull-offs and hammer-ons and you can really have a lot of fun with this tapping technique. Again, scenario based, but with all these levels, you have the ingredients to know how to create a sick baseline. And if you do not know any of these levels, then you really need to dive into it. I will say besides the technique part, all this is a must as a bass player. Technique adds an extra element to your bass line on top of just what you're doing with the notes. It's a cool, awesome way of taking something that sounds very vanilla and making it a sick bass line. Give this a go. I'm going to be doing courses on every single one of these levels down the line. Creating bass lines doesn't always have to be super flashy or super cool, but you want to be able to do it if you can. That's the video for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that and that can help you take your bass lines to the next level. Please smash the like button on this video so I can help grow my channel. Keep a lookout for some more videos coming out. Follow me on Instagram or TikTok if you want to see other educational videos. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.